Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel 3 Diast. In this video, we are going to practice this part inside Fusion 360 and we will explore solid modeling workspace inside Fusion 360. I will explain you the right approach in solid modeling workspace to 3D model this part. This is tutorial exercise 10. And if you have not watched my other videos on Fusion 360, check out our other videos as well. In this video, I am going to refer this technical drawing. So if you want to practice with me, you can download this technical drawing from the video description below. So without wasting much time, let's dive into Fusion 360 and start modeling. So whenever you will first launch your Fusion 360, the screen will look like this. By default, there is a drawing space open. So the first thing that we're going to do is We'll go on to the data panel over here. Here you can see, I will just click on here to open my data panel. And then I will go on to the right project for, I will just click on the right project. I will just open the right project and we'll go on to the right project folder. So this is my right project folder. I will just double click to open this folder. Here you can see, these are the already saved files. Now I will click on the save here to save my file. I will rename this file. First, I will make sure that the location is correct. So here you can, I will just, uh, rename my file. I will give it a name exercise 10 and here you can see and what I can do now is I can just click on the save here to save my file and the moment I had saved here you can see at the top my file name got changed and it's updated with the exercise 10 and also here you can see the file has been added here in the inside folder. So the data panel is over now. I will close the data panel from here since the work to save is over now. Now I will move on to our checking our document settings. So here you can see, I will check my units. So these are my units. Uh, right now it's millimeter. So if I want to change it, I have to click on here. So I will just click on here and here you can see we got different kind of unit types uh, like centimeter, millimeter, meter, inch, foot. So I can change it uh, whatever I want. But for now, uh, millimeter is correct. So I will just press cancel from here. And here you can see. The next thing that we'll do is uh, we'll make sure that our design history is turned on. So this bottom panel over here shows that my design history is turned on. And if it is not turned on, I can just click right click on here. And from here, I can I can able to turn on my uh, design history. So now we are ready to start our uh, sketching and modeling. So the first thing that we're going to do is start with a sketch. So we'll click on the create a sketch over here and then we'll select the plane. And this is the plane where I want to create my sketch and then I will activate my circle tool. So this is my center circle diameter tool. So I will activate this tool and will create a circle like this. So for now I will just, I'm just creating random circles. So I will create three different circles. Here you can see second circle and this is my third circle. And I'm just randomly creating this circle and now I will activate my dimension tool to define the diameter of these circles. So this, before that I will make sure that the center circle is converted to construction line and then I will activate my dimension tool and will select the circle that I want to define. So this is the circle I want to provide dimensions. So this is 180 millimeters and the inner circle this is 130 millimeters and then we'll define this uh, construction line circle. Uh, this one I just want to keep 160 millimeters. So the construction line circle will act as a PCD. So uh, we'll create few more things like we'll again we'll activate our circle tool and we create a circle over here like this. And I want to make a circle of 10 millimeter diameter. So first I will create a circle, then I will make sure that this center of the circle and the center of the main circle is in the collinear vertical position. So we'll apply the constraint after selecting the origins. Here you can see. And now I will activate my dimension tool and I will define the diameter of my circle. So this one I want to keep 10 millimeters. So here you can see. And what the next I am going to do is I am going to circular pattern this circle. So we will activate the tool and we will select the circle. Then we will select the center point. Here you can see this is my center point. And we will define number of times. So here I want to uh, keep 8 number of times and make sure that the angular spacing is full and we will press OK to accept the result. Here you can see. The circle has been uh, uh, patterned over eight number of times in a circular manner. And from here, I can change it anytime. So I can just double click on the icon and we'll be able to change it anytime. So this is what we got till now. So we'll click on, uh, before finishing the sketch, we'll make sure that we had defined everything. So a small red icon shows that we had defined everything. And now we'll move on to creating a few more uh, things on this sketch. 
so now we are going to activate the circle tool again and we'll create two more circles of little bigger diameter here you can see uh, and all these dimensions and details you will able to find on the pdf that i had attached in the video description below you can go and check it out and from there you can download all the details and dimensions and able to follow this video uh, more clearly so here you can see i had created a circle and i had changed that to construction line and then i will offset this circle by 40 millimeters over here here you can see and we'll press ok to set the result so this is what we got and then again we'll go on to the create panel over here then we'll activate the slot tool center slot tool and we'll create a slot from these two points like this here you can see and now i will make sure that this point and this point are in a collinear horizontal position so i had applied the constraint and here you can see i will define the diameter of this slot so this one i just want to keep 20 millimeter and i will make sure that i had offset this slot by 20 millimeter again so here you can see this is the profile we got and uh, this is 20 millimeter so i will adjust it the dimensions a little bit now i will activate my line tool and will connect from this point to uh, this circle and we'll do the same on the bottom side as well from this point to this circle so it will act as a closed profile and now i will con convert that arc to construction arc here you can see so you just have to select that uh, any uh, entity and convert that to construction type and it will change that to construction so uh, this is the profile we got so i will just double click on the profiles to select all the two profiles and we'll activate the circular pattern tool then we'll select the center point this is my center point and here you can see uh, whatever the entities i had selected is getting patterned by three number of times so i will make sure that the quantity is three and we'll press ok to accept the results here you can see this is what we got and we'll click on the finish the sketch for now before that i will just convert this circle to construction line because uh, these are not needed as a form line so i will just click on finish the sketch over here uh, since i had defined everything this red icon shows that i had defined my all my sketch sketch entities here you can see I clicked on finish. Now I will orbit my sketch a little bit to see the 3D view. Now I am going to activate extrude tool. So this is the extrude tool and we will select all the profiles that I want to extrude and will provide the thickness. So 15 millimeter is the thickness that I want to extrude and we will press ok. Here you can see this is the result we got our first 3D model inside Fusion 360. This is the basic shape of our model. If you refer to our technical drawing, you will able to see. So here you can see the body folder has been created uh, inside the design tree and inside that body folder, a new body has been created. Now we will move on to our next step. We will again create a sketch, activate our create a sketch tool. We will select the plane. So this is the plane we had selected and now i will turn on the origin from here so we'll activate our line tool first so I, so I will activate my line tool and we'll create a line like this at a particular inclination here you can see and then i will try to get the shape here you can see and now i will click a line like this then we'll connect from this point to this point like this and we'll make sure that this is vertical and we'll go on to the project tool and we'll activate the project tool and we'll project this sketch and we'll press ok here you can see now i will connect this line to the projected line here you can see so this is the profile we got now i will define few of the dimensions here like this one i want to keep 65 millimeters uh, and i will adjust the lines little bit to make it correct and now I'm going to define the other lines. So again, we'll activate our line tool. Uh, we'll create a line like this. Here you can see. And we'll make sure that these two lines are parallel. So we'll apply the constraint. So both the lines are parallel now. Now I will define the dimensions. I will define from this point to this line. The dimension is 65. And here you can see the things are getting messy now. So what I will do, I will just make sure that these two lines are horizontally collinear so we'll apply the constraint between these two points and now i will adjust the things little bit here you can see and uh, this one i will just delete this dimension or i can just write it 60 uh, 32.5 so half of 65 and now i will adjust this line little bit outside like this then we'll define this point to this point this is just five millimeters so here you can see and now i will just i'm just going to define few more things like i need to define the height total height for this 
So I will activate my dimension tool from this point to this line. I just want to make 135. This is 135. I will just change that to 135 and will press enter. So here you can see this is the this is what we got. Now I will again activate my dimension tool and will define this one as 20 millimeter and will adjust this line little bit. And from this line to this line, I will define this one as well. So this is 50 millimeters. So here you can see we had defined everything. So here you can see this is our uh, dimensions. So I can just click on finish a sketch to accept the results. Before that I had just converted that to construction line. And here you can see uh, the things are not looking good. I think uh, these points must be touching to the opening circle. So I will just go on to edit a sketch and will change this dimension 32.5 to 65. And here you can see this is the shape we got. Now it is touching to the circle and this is the right profile. Now what I can do, I can just click on the finish a sketch, sketch and we'll activate, go on to activate the revolve tool. We'll select the profile, then we'll select the axis along which I want to revolve. Here you can see it is giving me a preview. So I will make sure that the operation is joined and we'll press OK to accept the result. So here you can see this is what we got. After revolving a profile around, around a center axis, this is the profile we got. And now we'll activate the top face and we'll activate our sketch tool and we'll activate the circle tool. And we'll create two circles. Here you can see first I will create one circle like this. And then I will uh, dimension these two circles. So this one is just 10 millimeter and the other is just uh, 22 millimeters in diameter. So here you can see uh, these are the two circles. Now I will again activate my circle tool. So I will make sure that this point, this circle and this this thing are on the same uh, path but before that I will activate my circle tool I will create one more circle and I will make sure that this circle is construction line before that I will make sure that uh, these two circles are circular pattern uh, by the center point by four number of times here you can see and we'll press ok and the things are not looking good now so we had to align it on the right angle so we'll Okay, so to align these circles, uh, what I will do, I had made a line connecting the circle at the center and I converted that line to construction line and will create one more horizontal line and convert that to construction line. Then I will define the angle between these two lines. So this one I just want to keep 45. So and the rest of all the circles are since they are all patterned. So they will automatically take in their places and now the sketch are constrained. So this is the profile we got. And now uh, I need to... Uh, Finish this sketch and here you can see this is the result we got. So I think we had missed something. No, we did not miss something here. So we'll just select the profiles that we want to extrude and we'll select those all those four profiles up to this point. Here you can see up to this phase, sorry. And we'll press OK to accept the result. So here you can see this is what we got. So still uh, the, the whole holes are not correct. So again, we'll activate our extrude tool. We'll turn on the sketch. We'll activate the extrude tool and we'll select the the profiles that were left and will extrude it towards downward to make a cut and will press ok to accept the result. Now if I turn off the sketch here you can see this is what we got. So this is our final design uh, that we had created inside Fusion 360. So you can download the complete technical drawing, complete PDF of this uh, design uh, from the video description below. So go just go and check it out. Also there are lots of videos like this uh, exercise that you can find that you will able to find on my channel that will help you learn master fusion 360 and if you are first to my channel then i will strongly recommend you to subscribe my channel and, and also, also press the like button uh, because uh, that, that is the only way you can support to our channel thank you guys thank you so much for watching see you next time